Warning, this episode contains human waste. Big Oz takes no responsibility for the call-out fee to clean your sofa. Pause now and finish your dinner. All right, guys, welcome to a rundown on our composting toilet. So we have a Nature's Head composting toilet, and we've had this van now for three months. So we've been running this for a three-month period. Uh, what we want to do today is go through everything from how you use it, pros, cons, costings, um, there's going to be some poo in this episode and there's going to be some wee. And if you're not into those things, I highly recommend you skip this episode because one of the things we found when we first got this is there's not enough information out there. No one's willing to talk about what happens for all of us in a caravan. So we've been from having a cassette toilet and now we've come to a composting and we've got pros and cons for both of them. We want to tell you all about it. So come for a composting journey with us. All right, so this is a composting toilet. So as I said, this is from Nature's Head. Our caravan manufacturer put this one in our bathroom. And if you've never seen one before, it does look a little bit different. So this front compartment here is actually your wee canister. This takes up to 10 litres in it. And then around the back here is your poo canister. So everything you do poo-wise goes into here. This is your um, turner. So you can turn it around to agitate all of your poo and peat that you have in there. And this here is your flap to open so you can go to the toilet so when you have a look inside there's two different compartments so when you sit down if you poo watch out poo coming up it goes into here and if you're weeing you leave this shut and so everything runs forward into the front and it goes into your front canister so that means for men you need to sit down so that it's directed in this general direction because it's not ideal to be weeing up over here somewhere so you need to sit so it goes into this hole um, the other thing as well that you have on this toilet over here, this is an outlet for air and you've also got a 12 volt point. If you can see there, 12 volt point. So this actually powers a fan inside the toilet and this is your air outlet. And this is what helps the composting process happen. It also minimizes smell. So ours goes up all the way to our roof and disperses up there. So one of the really cool things about a composting toilet is that this whole unit actually detaches from the caravan so you can take it outside and clean it. So we're going to do that in a second. But before we do, I just wanted to mention the toilet rolls on the wall because I'm pretty sure you're going to ask me how they're staying there. So this is actually a paper towel holder. So I got it from online. It was like $9 or something from an online store. And we've got one in our kitchen as well that I use for actual paper towel. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention too about toilet paper that's really important. Normally, if you go to the toilet, you just rip off however much you need and then you're either going to scrunch or fold depending on what you're like. But when it comes to composting, to put a really big long piece like this, it's got to break down a little bit more. So something that helps that process is just breaking off the squares that you need. So I don't know, maybe you're a four square or maybe you're a six square. It really depends on you. But if you use it like this instead, when it's actually in there being moved around, it's going to break up a lot faster and it just helps with the composting process. And then when you get to the other end, it's a much better consistency for you to empty. So I got Chris to bring the toilet out for me. He's the muscles in the house, although I can do it. It's just easier for him. Um, so pretty much at this point, we're going to take a top, take the top of the toilet off. And so we can empty the bottom portion of the toilet. So this is where you see it all start to come apart. The only things I've got here are two big black plastic bags. So I use two so I can double bag it. Um, that's more so it's not really for our benefit. It's more because when you do it in a caravan park, you're going to be putting it into a bin. And if someone else has something sharp in there, broken glass, it goes through bags. No one else really wants to be able to deal with this, you know, like this is our waste. So I'll double bag it and put it in there. Um, the other thing I'm going to show you too is how we go about cleaning it when we're in a caravan park. So if you're out in the bush, you can kind of just do it on the lawn where you are and it's going to dissipate the few tiny little bits of peat that is left behind. But when you're in a caravan park, obviously you can't do that on your slab or on the grass of your site. 
So we're going to go to the dump point to sort that out. So we've emptied this a few times now and in different situations. So this is our first time in a caravan park doing this. However, in previous scenarios, we've been on my sister's property, for example, and she was quite happy for us to throw this onto the lawn for her, not her actual front lawn, but in the backyard of her house sort of thing, because it just works as a compost. So basically all that's in here, it's good for your garden. It's good for your grass. It's good for, you know, the animals around and that, which is, it sounds crazy, but there's no chemicals in there. It's only waste. It's no different to your dog pooing on the lawn and then it dissipating into the grass. So we have previously thrown this out onto someone's property. Um, and we have also done the bag version as well. So either works. However, I find throwing it out onto lawn or onto the ground is much easier than trying to get it into a bag. But this method is also acceptable to put it into your standard waste because when you use a dump point, that's for black water and what's in here is not considered black waste. So your wee is in a separate canister, which you can put on a tree or anywhere and your poo is considered more of a compost. It's not a black waste, so it's safe. So to start with, we need to open the toilet. There's one on both sides. And then this lifts the whole top piece. So again, if at any stage you are someone who's going to get squeamish, this is waste and you are going to see it. We're going to be talking about it and I'm going to show it to you. This is the time when you can stop watching if you're not interested in that. But we remove this lid and across. And that is what's left in there, which it looks like someone actually hasn't stirred it up. There's a fresh one. <laughs> I'll just get rid of the freshie. Hang on. There you go. Okay. So if you want to have a look at it, you can. Um, pretty much there's a wee container here. So this one comes across. That's separate. So you can see there's wee in there at the moment. And that's our poo container. So this year, none of this comes apart. This is one solid unit now. And that has your waste in it. This waste getting to this bag is probably the trickiest portion of all of this. Um, can I do it? Yes, I can. Can Chris do it? Yes, anyone can. Um, you've just got to have a little bit of strength to be able to hold it. So some people in these cases are going to want to wear gloves. You know what? Hand washing gets rid of any micro bacteria on your hands. And as I said, this is not a public toilet. This is our waste. I've changed my son's bum since he was a newborn. I've done it with my daughter. This is theirs as well. It's, it's really no different. So I feel okay about it. Find the top of our bag. The wind is gonna cause me problems today, I reckon. <laughs> Let's put the wee on the bottom of it. right now if you're watching drop it in the comments below how you feel about all this so pretty much at this point we're almost empty so this portion here we're actually going to take over to the dump point and then you treat it similar to what you would with a cartridge you give it a rinse and you're going to wash it down the dump point clean up behind yourself do the right thing um, and this bag here it can actually go into general waste so again I'm going to double bag it I've got my second bag here but if you want to have a look it's honestly it looks like soil
So first of all, I'm going to get rid of the wee. Just be wary because it gets top heavy. What I've done, I've basically poured the wee into the dump point. I've given that a rinse and rinse that out, so that's to the side now. This is the composting toilet portion of it, so I'm gonna take the lid off because I've filled it with water and rinsed it out and I just want it to go down here and then we'll rinse down anything left the way you would normally with a cartridge toilet. So basically, I've just given this a big wipe down now. It was actually funny, in between recording, the guy wanted to come past and mow the lawn. So he's been and mowed our site while we were emptying our toilet. That was interesting. But in that process as well, <laughs> and it looks like there's someone who wants to come and say hello at the moment while we empty our toilet. Um, but in that process, you know what it's like, the lawnmower throws green grass everywhere. So the whole toilet got covered with all this green clippings and stuff. But Apart from that, we're good to go. Um, this is now okay to put back in the caravan. All we've got to do is put our peat brick in, which I'll show you once we get inside. So inside the toilet now, it's all reasonably clean. I haven't scrubbed it. The reason for that is there's good bacteria in there and good molds and funguses and things that help break down your poo. So you can see in the top of the lid there, there's actually a lot of mold. It's like a white mold. That's not a bad thing to have. White mold is a good thing. So unless it's really smelly, that's when you've got a problem. So once this is empty, you shouldn't have a smell. It should smell like um, wet soil. That's probably what I'd describe it as. So that's fine the way that is. That can go back in. We'll pop in our peat brick. Um, as you can see inside, I haven't completely cleaned it for the same reason. You want to leave some of that bacteria that was in there before, which will help that composting process get started. So now that we're back in the caravan, I've cleaned everything out. It's good to go. As you saw, it's screwed in place. We've just got to get it ready for use. So there's only two products that you need to have with a composting toilet. 
You've got your peat brick. This is a nine litre one. So these ones are available in Big W. They're $6 per brick. And I think you can get um, peat bricks in Bunnings as well. And But they're the 15 litre ones. So you've got to chop them to make them the right size. That's a real pain. Um, gardening stores also have them available and Nature's Head, you can buy them online. And the other place where they're going to come available soon is actually Anaconda stores. So keep an eye out for that if you're going for some camping supplies. Um, the other thing you'll need is just some vinegar. So any vinegar will do. What vinegar does, it kind of offsets the urine. So any wee smell that you're going to get, especially if it's sitting in there for two to three days, by the third day, it'll help offset that for you. So I'll show you how we put these in. And then we'll go on to some Q and A's for you about things you want to know. So I've got my measuring jug here. It's hard to see, but that's hundred mils there. These have had a lot of love over the time. So I'll chuck hundred mils in here. And um, what was a little bit more. This is kind of through guesstimation. I figured that hundred mils is a good amount for the amount of time that we have it sitting in there. It still looks like more because it's sitting on an angle, but it is around the hundred mil mark. So we started putting in way too much and we were just going through vinegar and then over time I figured at 100 mils it works quite well. There's no smell from that. So lift up the main lid and then this can go straight in your jug. So now the wee compartment is ready for use. All we need to do is deal with the poo compartment. So my peat brick here, I'm just going to chop this open. So in here, I hold that with my knee. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to try and do it without making too much mess. I'd normally do this outside, but I thought I'd come and do it inside because of the gardener that's out there. Oh, look at the mess I'm making. <sighs> Typical, isn't it? But it's in there. That's the main thing. So... I'll just use those squares of toilet paper that I showed you earlier. I've just got a little bit around the lip. I'm just going to get rid of that so we get a good seal. I'm going to shut this. I'll vacuum off that little bit in a minute. We can shut this up because now we can access the toilet through the hatch. So I can put all my liquid in through there. So for a nine litre peat brick, you put in between two to three litres of water. The first time we did this, we put in the full three litres and I found that uh, to begin with, it was quite moist. Um, you kind of want it to be, how would you even explain that? Like damp soil. That's the con consistency you want it to be through the whole process with your, you know, number twos and everything going in there. So if for whatever reason it is too dry, uh, often you'll find the foot pedal becomes really hard to turn. If that's the case, you can actually add water to this toilet. If it's too moist, use a little bit more toilet paper and that will help absorb it. Um, I've also heard people say that they put a little bit extra peat in there. So if you've got some available, but we use those bricks. So they're always done up as the perfect amount. So that doesn't work for us, but toilet paper does. So this is a 500 mil drug. So I've got to put in four of these. So I'll just do that quickly. That was our final one. So pretty much just shut this. So now that's sealed off, it's done. Shut your lid. And we're gonna leave that for probably an hour or two, I'd say. So what happens with the peat brick? It basically just absorbs all that water and then it becomes like a, a moist soil consistency. So what I'll do is as that breaks down, we'll have a look through the hole and I'll be able to show you kind of what it looks like if you've never seen that before. It's just like dirt, basically, um, damp soil that'll sit in there. It's been about two hours. I just want to show you what this looks like. So if you have a look in here, so basically you can see in here the way this peat has gone. Um, there's still a couple of, see there's a big chunk there that's still quite dry. So there's not been enough moisture to actually break that down yet and turn it into that peat texture. But I'm not worried about that because once poo starts to go in there, that will break down. My biggest thing is as long as this can turn and move it all around, which it can, there's nothing that's holding that in the way. Oh, I don't want to come out. Um, that's perfect. 
So we can start using this now for number twos and um, yeah, we're good to go for another four weeks. So basically you've seen us through the whole composting process. So if you've never seen that before, you might be thinking that was a lot of work. Like you had to do a lot there to clean that toilet. But remember to do that process is once every four weeks. So we've met um, a lot of couples on the road. So remember we're a family. So we've got two adults and two children using this all the time. Our little guy, he does the same as what we do almost. So, you know, like there's a lot going in there, but we've met couples along the way and they've said they can get two months out of it. So if you're not putting toilet paper in there all the time, especially from the girls after you wee, you can use either a bin or you can put it into the composting portion of the toilet. But if you're not using toilet paper in there, it's going to last you a hell of a lot longer. The girls in our house tend to put the wee toilet paper into a bin, but anything from a number two into the composting toilet. So that'll help you just have a longer use. So once every four weeks to do that process, I'm really happy with that versus the dump point that we used to visit every four days. A few of the things that you hear about composting toilets quite often and some of the reasons why we took so long to actually get a composting toilet was because a lot of people say that they can smell. Um, I personally think this is coming from people who haven't had a composting toilet before or they're not using it correctly. So if you're using your composting toilet right and it's not too moist and you keep the wee in the wee side and the poo in the poo side, it's not going to smell. It smells honestly like damp soil. I really don't know how else to describe it. If it's starting to smell, there's something wrong with your mix. There's something not right. So we have had that experience as well. We actually had gastro go through our house and everyone knows what's involved with gastro. Uh, everything's a lot more moist than what it normally is. We only got two weeks out of our composting toilet that time because it was just too moist. And when it comes to emptying it, you'll end up with a slightly more um, you know, poo smell to it. But if you're using it properly and it's not too damp, you shouldn't get that. And even the one that I emptied just before, you know that there's maybe poo in it, but it's not offensive. I mean, I've been to dump points that smell a lot worse than what that canister smelled like. And you saw what was in there. A couple of the other things which kind of work in together is how long can you get out of a composting toilet? I've sort of answered that so far. I'll go into a little bit more detail and also the costing behind it. So whether this is cost effective to move to it or not. The Nature's Head toilet itself is just over $1,700 to buy as is. Um, with that, you get everything you see here. There's a couple of different pedals available, one so you can do it by hand or one so you can do it by foot. You can choose them upon purchasing. Um, it includes your wiring. And the only things you need to do to put it in place is two screws on the floor, as well as something to ventilate the extra air out of it and 12 volt power. So $1,700 will get you set up. From a use perspective, with this one in particular, we've done three now. We've had two that were four weeks long and we've had one that was two weeks long. The two week one was due to gastro. It just, everything about this system, it did really well considering it lasted for two weeks, but it's not made for that full time. So normal number twos work really well with this toilet. If you're someone who's not normal most of the time, maybe you'll have a few issues with this or you'll need to empty it more regularly. The wee side of this toilet, we find that we empty this every two days. So that's with two adults and two children. Uh, we use this full time. We don't use the toilet blocks. We don't opt to go to the toilet blocks. Why would you when you've got a toilet on board to use? When we free camp though, Chris does tend to go for a wee on a tree when it's available. If there is no tree available to go for a wee on, then he is using this as well. And on average, we're emptying it every two days. So costing, let's have a chat about costing. So as I said, we had a cartridge toilet before this and now we're on a composting toilet. So with the cartridge toilet, we used to use the Thetford Blue Concentrate chemical, um, which we would buy from Anaconda and they are $31 for a bottle. And because of a lot of the areas we went to were quite a bit warmer, they have recommended dosages on the back and it says if it's over 30 degrees, use 70 mils. So I always use 70 mils with 1.5 litres of water into a 19 litre cartridge. So that was my go-to and that's just how we have always done it. So using my average as a way to work things out so I can tell you about our cost savings, I'll use those numbers. So when we had the cartridge, we would empty it around about six times per month. So that is also the figure I'm going to use to work everything out. 
So based on that, we have been able to use this now for 10 weeks straight. We've had two four-week empties and one two-week empties. So that's a 10-week period with some good toilets and some not so good toilets, which I think makes it realistic because in the cartridge, some weeks take longer than others as well. So over a 10-week a period with the cartridge, we spent $46.50, which is on the chemical. So that was a container and a half of the chemical from Anaconda. And we would have to go to the dump point between probably five to six times per month. So $46.50 to have a cartridge. Since having this toilet over a 10 week period, we've emptied it three times, which means we've had to do that process that you just saw three times. What that includes for every change is one peat brick that costs $6. The other thing that you need to take into account with a composting toilet is the vinegar usage. So a two litre container of vinegar that you saw earlier costs $2. In that 10 week period, we would have used 3.5 litres of vinegar which works out to be $3.50. So all together, with all those things taken into mind, it would work out as $21.50 to be able to use this toilet for a 10-week period versus $46.50 to use a cartridge toilet. Overall, that's a $25 saving. So that, to me, is a cool thing. Anything you can save money on the road, especially when you're traveling, if you're doing a lap or something like that, your budget is so important. And if you can save $25 every two and a half months, it's still money that you would have had to spend on something else. The other thing is too, the peat bricks, they're really easy and compact and you can pack them just about anywhere. They're light, they're easy to get your hands on. The chemicals, however, you've got to go to a dedicated camping store to be able to get them. Whereas you can carry multiple peat bricks around and pile them anywhere in the caravan and they're not an issue. There's no risk of staining anything blue. There's no risk of it leaking anywhere. Not to mention that with this toilet, you've got no chemicals. So from a pros and cons perspective, I kind of want to go through some of the things that we found that are really good about this toilet versus the things that are not so good about this toilet. As you know, we've had both of them now, so we can give you an easy opinion on both sides of it. So some of the pros that I found about having a composting toilet is that you don't have to go to dump points. Now, I know obviously today we've taken you to a dump point, but that's once in four weeks. It used to be once every four or five days. So that to me is a big difference. I really love that we're not being exposed to anyone else's toileting in a sense. There's some dump points we went to and I was almost disgusted about having to use that space. Whereas most of the time what we do here, especially when we're off grid and we're camping somewhere, we don't need to go near a dump point. We can do this all in the comfort of the outdoor of our caravan. And it's only once every four weeks. The other thing with this toilet, it's going to save you on water. You don't have a flush. so instantly you've got water saving there we can if you want to have like a spray bottle and put a vinegar mix in there and that just helps to rinse out the bowl and sometimes that's helpful as well if you don't have very good aim maybe you're going to hit the side you know have a vinegar spray bottle and that helps you rinse everything down but also in a way that you don't have to do it with chemicals which is another thing that's really cool about this setup you don't have to have any chemicals to make this work it's completely eco-friendly no matter where your waste ends up, you're not actually causing any damage whatsoever. So, you know, the world these days are moving to things that are compostable, biodegradable, chemical-free, paraben-free, all these different things. By using this toilet, you're falling into that category and helping the environment. So that to me is a pro. One of the biggest pros as well about having this toilet is a cost saving. At $6 a brick, and that's pretty much all you need to run this toilet. How cool is that? You don't have to carry around a heap of chemicals in your caravan. You can just have a couple of peat bricks there and that's two months worth. So two of those stored away is gonna give you at least two months with your toilet. And by having two of those in your cupboard ready to go, so you've got at least two months ready to go for your toilet, you've then got two months off grid because technically this wee canister, there's no chemicals in there as well, which means you can go pour it on a tree, you can pour it on the grass, you can put it in the bush somewhere. And there's gonna be a few people that say they don't like the idea of that and they think it's wrong that you should pour that wee canister out on a bush or on a tree. But let's be honest, what man hasn't peed on a tree before? And that's exactly what that is. Just the difference is, is I haven't stood there and done it. It's gone into here and then gone on the tree or Chris has done it into here and then gone onto a tree or a bush or, a, you know, a fence post, wherever it ends up. It's completely natural and it's normal. It's what your horse does in a paddock. It's what a cow does in a paddock. It's all the same. There's no chemicals in there. There's nothing that can damage anyone. 
and it's no different to you standing in a tree and winging as well. So it manages to keep you off grid longer. It means we can go to a free camp and in four to five days time, we don't have to go to a dump point because our toilet's full because one of the kids pressed the flash for so long, wasting our water, filling our canister, which then sits there in the sun if you leave it outside and gets hot and stinky. It's in here, it's ready to go and you have multiple weeks of uses out of it. Now, the other portion of this toilet that I want to talk about is the cons because not everything is perfect. There's always a downside to everything you do, whether that's a cartridge toilet or a composting toilet. So if you want to do a retrofit in your caravan and you want this to be your setup, the couple of cons you're going to face is that you've got a big hole in the back of your caravan that you no longer need. And also it's going to have an upfront cost of $1,700. However, you're going to save money in the long run by having this and give more freedom to your lifestyle. So that cost can be seen as a downside to this setup. The other thing that may be seen as a downside is this liquid canister. This only holds 10 litres of wee. So between a family of four, like I said, we're emptying it every two days. If you're a couple, it may not be so bad, especially if your bloke can go out and go and wee on a tree somewhere. But as long as you're prepared to be emptying that every probably two days, if you're a family of five, maybe every one day, it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, the other thing too, depending on your location, might depend on how you feel about emptying that somewhere. If you're in a caravan park, you may not want to go and empty this on a tree. However, you can go put it down the dump point as well if you prefer to do that. The other option you can do is actually opt to buy another one of these wee canisters. They actually have a screw-on lid that goes onto that top piece. So you could take it in your car to a local dump point if you don't feel comfortable putting it on a tree. Or if you are going through a lot of wee, you could also just keep two canisters on you and then go and empty two of them at the same time. So that's an option as well. The other downside it's kind of a downside but it's not really a downside is maybe the first couple of times you're going to use it you might feel a little bit disheartened or you might not be sure of whether you've done it right or you might find that the foot pedal feels a bit firm and you know you think oh what are we doing like this isn't right um composting and using a composting toilet takes education it takes a little bit of research. It takes a little bit of test and trial to figure out what works for your family. So what works for you and your family versus what works for us could be slightly different. So what you take from this video, if you're starting with a composting toilet, is a great base to start on. But what works for you going forward might be slightly different. You might have kids that like to use a half a ton of toilet paper. And if that's the case, maybe you're going to have to slow them down with that. Or maybe you need to add a cup of water in there just to keep it moist again. So again, it just comes down to education. Young kids can be a little bit harder to teach. Our youngest is three. And it took a little while for him to understand how this whole toilet situation works. We've had a couple of poos on top of the flap instead of inside the canister, things like that. But with time, it will all come to you. And I reckon the final con, which again, it's not really a con unless the man feels that he's not okay with it, is that men need to sit down to wee. So my partner, Chris, he has to come in here and sit down to wee, which it's it's kind of funny because when you live in a caravan in close quarters with each other anyway, you know, you see your partner go to go sit in the toilet and you assume number two, but I just don't know anymore. So men need to sit forward and it's just to assist the wee going into this front portion of the container rather than it going into the rear end because once you mix your canister with wee and poo, it becomes a black water waste. It's something you can no longer then put into a bin. It's something you can no longer, you know, put into a compost pile if someone wanted you to do that. Um, the two combined together is what make it a black waste. As long as they say separate, all's okay. Overall, that is a rundown of our composting toilet, how we clean it, how we use it, what we've learned about it, the pros and cons, everything that we know about composting. I guess the last thing I'd like to finish on around that as well is if we had the choice now to go to a cassette or canister toilet versus a composting toilet, would we? No, definitely not. We would choose composting all the way. There are so many things about this setup which is just so much more user-friendly for when you're on the road full-time. This, this suits our lifestyle and our off-grid lifestyle and free camping down to a T. Dump points just don't work like that. And on top of that as well, we like to be eco-friendly and do what we can. So this also supports that. So if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of what we're up to, please feel free to subscribe to our channel. You can like this video. You can also leave a comment below if you've got any questions whatsoever. I Honestly, I want it to be 
um, no elephant in the room. If you've got something and you want to know it and I haven't answered it in this video or you didn't see enough of the poo or whatever it is, there's something that you need to know, drop it in the comments below because I want you to feel good about making this move. Uh, we bought this van and a composting toilet was what came in this van and it was really quite nerve wracking to go from a cassette toilet to a composting toilet. And if you're in that situation and you don't really know what's coming next, I just want you to feel confident. So yeah, chuck your comments below. I will get back to you. I will give you as much help as I can so you feel confident with a composting toilet. Thanks for watching guys. So now the wee compartment is ready for use. Now we just got to get rid. Uh, got rid of. That doesn't work for us, but toilet paper does. So that doesn't work for us, but toilet paper does. <coughs> so basically, you've seen this through. Are you recording? Start again. Yep. So the cartridge toilet we used to empty every four days thereabouts. So that means that we'd be doing it around about six times in a month. Is that right? Six times per month. I don't like the way this is coming out. Or does it sound okay? It's fact. Yeah? Is that okay? Yeah, just try not use the word moist over and over and over. Okay. Quite moist. If it's too moist, a moist soil, not been enough moisture, not too moist, a lot more moist, keep it moist, too moist. Hey legends, thanks for watching this week's episode. We hope you learnt lots about composting toilets. Don't forget our next camp out at Wee Jasper in New South Wales is coming up fast. It's only six weeks away now and there's only a couple of weeks to get your merch orders in for the camp out guru tees as well. If you've missed the window and you don't get to come to this one, join the Facebook group and you'll get to hear where we're holding them around Australia. Thanks and we'll catch you next week. See you legends.